Today is September 28th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On September 28th, 1920, a Chicago grand jury indicts eight members of the Chicago White Sox on charges of fixing the 1919 World Series. White Sox owner Charles Kaminsky immediately suspends Chick Gendel, Buck Weaver, Happy Flinch, Swede Rosberg, Fred McMillan, Eddie Sincock, Lefty Williams, and Shoeless Joe Jackson, who are notorious for their involvement in the Black Sox scandal. At the time of the grand jury indictment, Chicago was finishing up a 96-win season. The White Sox eventually lost a heated pennant race to the Cleveland Indians who went on to win the World Series. None of the eight players who were all brought to trial played the first four months of the 1921 season. All were acquitted on August 2nd that year, but there would be no long-term celebration for any of them. A day after their acquittal, Judge Kenshaw Mountain Landis, the Major League Baseball Commissioner, suspended all eight from organized baseball for life. Evidence pointed to the player's guilt, and many have debated the involvement of Jackson, one of the greatest players in, in, in MLB history. But there's no doubt the banishment of the eight White Sox players left a black mark on baseball. In an open letter to Comiskey, published in an Oklahoma newspaper, a fan wrote, don't let those suspended ball players return to the White Sox fold, though a jury declared them free and a judge deemed justice accomplished, the Black Sox can never be washed white. Now I'd like to bring you another This Day in History. On September 28, 1941, the last day of the Major League Baseball's regular season, the Boston Red Sox, the Boston Red Sox, Ted Williams gets six hits in eight at bats during a doubleheader in Philadelphia, boosting his average to .406. He became the first player since 1930 to hit .400. I guess I'll be satisfied with that thrill out there today. He tells the Boston Globe about hitting 400. I never wanted anything harder in my life. In addition to his 406 batting average, no major league player since Williams has hit 400. The left fielder led the big leagues with 37 homers, 135 runs, and a slugging average of 0.735. Williams nicknamed the Splendid Splinter and the Thumper began his big league career with the White Sox in 1939. In 1942, Williams won the American League Triple Crown for his highest batting average, for highest batting average and most RBIs and home runs. He won the Triple Crown again in 1947. In 1946 and 1949, Williams was named the American League's most valuable player, and in June 1960, he became the fourth player in Major League history to hit 500 homers. He was selected to the All-Star team for 17 times. Williams, who spent his entire career with the Red Sox, played his final game on September 28, 1960 at Boston's Fenway Park. He homered in his final at-bat, giving him 521 for his career. Williams retired with a lifelong batting average of .344, a 
483 career on base average and 2,654 hits. His achievements were all more impressive because his career was interrupted twice for military service. Williams was a Marine Corps, Corps pilot during World War II and the Korean War, and as a result, he missed nearly five MLB seasons. William, who was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1966, managed the Washington Senators renamed the Texas Rangers in 1972, from 1969 to 1972. In 1984, the Boston Red Sox retired his number nine uniform number. Williams died of cardiac arrest at the age of 83 on July 5, 2002, in Florida. In a controversial move, his son sent his father's body to be frozen at a Crinotics Laboratory.